She said she didn't have to go to school today. I mean, tomorrow. So you could just spend the night and hang out with a 13 year old girl. That's cool. Mm -hmm. You do. What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Grimm. So you guys have been absolutely loving my last couple episodes on this Hanson v. Predator stuff, and I personally love reacting to these as well. So today we're about to meet with who, in my opinion, is the absolute greasiest, creepiest predator that we see on this show so far. Now, obviously, all these people are very creepy and terrible in their own ways, but this dude just takes the cake purely off of like how he looks physically as well and i'm sure most of you would agree with me so make sure you watch until the very end because this one is quite insane this guy is just an absolute idiot and he gets swiftly hauled off to jail right after this awkward confrontation with chris hansen so without any further ado let's get into that shall we what did you bring presents what do you got show me Shit. So first things first with this guy and what makes him so scary to me, besides the fact that he looks like Willem Dafoe after running a marathon with a comb over, but the thing that's super creepy to me about this dude is how quickly he walks into the house and just brazenly walks up to the decoy and goes right up next to them like aggressively right away. You know, if this wasn't a setup and this wasn't a sting, that would have been a very dangerous situation for whoever he was talking to. And you can even see the decoy is put off by this, you know, she has to back up and clearly is being instructed by the show to keep distance from this guy. Guy, which is hard because he's literally giving her no room. What kind is it? Thank you. And look how proud this idiot is of his little chocolate that he brought her and like tea and Cheetos. Like he's literally doing the bare minimum, trying to break the law here and being an absolute monster, all with a massive grin on his face. And you know he spent the last bit of his money on these Cheetos as well because he thought this was his big break. Well, joke's on him, it's just gonna land him in jail. So what do you wanna do? A hug? I don't know. Hey, Boof. Hey. You gotta see if I that school right there for <laughs> so this reveal was one of the swiftest, but one of the best in the entire series, in my opinion. At least what I've seen so far. This girl has to run away because he tries to give her a hug, and again, they cannot touch the decoy because they don't know what would happen. The person might try to, like, take her hostage once Chris Hansen pops out, and that could just cause a whole terrible situation. So she runs to the back, and Chris Hansen pops out with a saying that he always says to this decoy every time they've chatted, which is, hey, boo. <laughs> That's such poetic justice, and you know, this dude's just absolutely crapping his pants right now. Yo, real quick, I hate to interrupt the video, but a large chunk of you guys that watch my channel are not subscribed, and I'm trying to get to 650K. So if you can help me with that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and leave a like and comment for the algorithm if you're enjoying this video so far. I would appreciate it so much. Without any further ado, let's get back into the video. What is your plan here tonight? Just hang out and watch football? Hang out and watch football with whom? With her. Who's her? With Bailey. Bailey. And how did you meet Bailey in heaven? Through which, uh, Whisper. Whisper. Mm -hmm. And you... <sighs> And this dude isn't even trying to lie off rip. He's just trying to act like he knew she was 14, yeah, but he's just trying to be, you know, a friendly person and come over and spend time with this 14 year old child. He really wasn't planning on doing nothing. It's funny how they all have the same exact basic crap story. Like obviously these guys have not thought this through. They didn't expect to be caught in this way. And he just absolutely has no backup plan of how to get out of this. Also look at this comb over. He has like a consistent strand of hair going down and across his head through the intermittent like balding spots. This is disgusting to look at, but pretty much exactly how I expect these guys to look if I'm being honest. And why would you at 30 think it would be okay to hang out with a 13 year old girl home alone? I mean, we just hit it off, friends. You hit it off with a 13 year old girl. I mean, we're friends, Chris. You never heard of people hanging out as friends? <laughs> I think you're the weird one for making it something is not. Like, uh, no, dude. People who are greasy and 30 years old should not be friends with 14 year olds. Also, not even 14. He knew she was 13. She said she was 13 multiple times, but he just added an extra year to make it seem a little bit less bad. You know, then she's almost halfway to his age. I'm sure that was his thought process there, but it clearly didn't work with Chris. I know, we just came to hang out. Not and brought what, get a hug? And watch football. Watch football? Yep. Who's playing tonight? Steelers and the Ravens. I had no intentions with nothing. <laughs> I will admit he had that answer. Uh, a very, very down pat. I'm sure he was planning on watching this actually tonight, so maybe he really did know who was playing. But yeah, that excuse is not going to get you out of it either. You can keep going on with this, oh, we're just friends thing, but wait until Chris brings up the chat logs that they have of you talking to this decoy, and that whole thing goes out the window. You can see very clearly you had terrible intentions. And how many times have you done this with somebody who's 13, 14 years old? Never. Never talked to another girl who said she was 13? No. Nope. Well, who's Brittany? 
Oh, Brittany. That was the other girl you were talking to. And that's right. They actually place out multiple, you know, bait, fake profiles out there. And this guy fell for two of them in their investigation. So he is a repeat offender. Just another thing to prove that this is not his first time. Also, just it would be astronomical luck if every single time Chris Hansen, you know, caught one of these people in these stings, it was actually their first time. Like, obviously, these people are out being monsters left and right, sadly. And this is definitely freaking greaseballs hundredth time at least trying to get with someone that's this age. And later you tell her, I would love to be the first guy to make you blank if you wanted me. What am I to make of this? Uh, there was no intentions made by it. That shows clear intent. <laughs> and Chris says a very, very explicit message that this guy says that is clearly showing his intentions. And he's like, I didn't mean anything by that. I was just using, you know, some poetry, some figure of speech. Like every one of his excuses gets worse and worse. How idiotic could you be, my dude? And then you talk about that you and a bunch of people snuck into a mansion and partied for days. Where was that mansion? Um, that was a while ago, maybe eight, nine years ago. Well, so it was a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, maybe eight, nine years ago when this decoy would have been four or five years old. This dude is a disgusting sleazeball. And it's just so funny that he's also trying to spit game with people by bragging about some random mansion party that he had nine years ago. You know, that mansion was probably just a house with four bedrooms because he's never seen something with more than three bedrooms. So that to him is a mansion. And it was just a bunch of crackheads doing crackhead stuff there. Like this dude is absolutely insane. If he thinks any of this would work on someone in real life, he should have known it was a setup with how how smoothly it was going with how terrible his smooth talk was but you see how this looks absolutely i mean you're 30 years old the girl you were talking to told you very clearly she was 13. i mean i had no intentions just besides john and maybe his strategy here is thinking hey if i just say the same thing over and over and tell him there was no intention he'll finally believe me but no it's clear to see that you just can't think of any other excuse and you're now squirming repeating the same thing over and over you might as well just get down into the fetal position and start crying over and over i didn't have any intentions i didn't have any intentions i swear that might work even slightly better than you just sitting here repeating the same lie now you talked about spending the night here tonight well uh, yes or no it depended you know like if she had to wake up in the morning, you know, like, if I was going to stay Did here. Did she have to go to school? <laughs> oh, my God. This dude dug him such a deep hole. He even talked about spending the night and is still considering it or was acting like he was considering it when going over that in his head. He's like, yeah, it would have depended, like, if her parents were here, if she, like, needed to get up for school or something tomorrow. Like, I probably wasn't going to spend the night, but I might have. What an absolute idiot. All I can say is he's making this future prosecutor's case that much easier every time he speaks. So please keep talking, dude. You're doing a great job. Who's uh, ringing you up? Oh, my cousin. Your cousin? Yeah. What does your cousin want? Does your cousin know that you're coming to visit a 13-year-old girl tonight? No. Your sister? No. She knows that I was coming to hang out with a girl. Sweet. And here, Hansen asks about his sister because he actually is such a loser that he doesn't have a car. And then he had to have his sister drive him over to what she thought was just a normal booty call. Little does she know her brother is an absolute creep or she does know and she's complicit in it, but I'm not gonna just assume that of the sister. I'm guessing this guy is keeping his little secret very tightly and not telling anyone because it could incriminate him, you know, quite easily. And it's about to. <laughs> and I didn't plan on it. You didn't plan on it? Come on, you talked about it. But that wasn't my intentions. I talked to her all day today about just coming over, watching the game, and just hanging out. And the funniest thing to me is they keep referencing back to these chat logs. It's like, dude, they clearly have the freaking receipts. Why are you still fighting him on this and being confrontational? Most of the time, they're getting to the, you know, apologetic phase at this point, trying to beg for mercy. And he's just doubling down like, no, I just wanted to come over and watch the freaking game. I can't become friends with a 13 year old, come over when their parents aren't over. And we just watch the Ravens throw around the big skin a little bit. <laughs> what kind of world is this? I mean, I just want to make a friend. You're crazy. I had no intentions. I keep saying it, dude. You can keep saying it a thousand times. He literally has pages of text of you talking to this person, saying all this inappropriate stuff and saying what you wanted to do when you went over there. So it's not going to work. Well, there's something you need to know, and that is I'm Chris Hansen. And this is an investigation called Hansen versus Predator. Sir, if you want to leave, you should go out that door right there. And finally, after enough looping around with the same old conversation points, Chris realizes he's really getting nowhere with this guy. And it's time to move on into the final phase where he walks out into the garage to be ambushed by cops and taken away in a squad car as we all clap happily at another creep getting exposed and taken to jail. It's funny how they always react trying to cover their faces too as if they haven't been on hidden camera this entire time. As soon as you see Chris Hansen, you should know what's up. And I'm sure this guy might have because Chris has been doing this on TV for a decade or more, at 
least. But this walkout is actually special because instead of walking towards the garage door, he actually walks right into the room that the cops are hiding. That must have been quite a scare, but let's watch that happen real quick as we wrap this up. So, yep, exactly what I just said happens to him. They load him up in the car, take him down to the station. There is a little bit of footage of him getting interviewed, but really it's just him crying in this 5X South Pole shirt that he got from Goodwill because he's an absolute crackhead that loves clothes that are four times bigger than he need to be. Yeah, so that was John in his case on Hanson versus Predator. You gotta agree with me after seeing this guy. He might be the absolute epitome of what you expect these predators to look like. Just slimy and disgusting and way older looking than 30. I'm still shocked that this dude is 30 years old, but hey, that's what being a crackhead will do to you. Luckily, he did serve some time for this. Not enough in my opinion, but it seems like he's going to be under a watchful eye for the rest of his life so that he does not become a repeat offender. So I guess that's it for today's case. Let me know what you thought of this down in the comments below. I thought it was a hilarious confrontation because he literally had nothing good to say. He just scrambled the entire time. And I guess that's kind of how these always go, but it is so fun to see how each person uniquely handles it. You know, it's just being faced with the feeling that your life is about to fall apart all because you're an absolute monster and deserve it has got to be a difficult thing for these guys to face so as always i'll see you guys in the next video and until next time peace out